Welcome to the Unstick Your Mind podcast on Mimika TV. Get ready to get unstuck, align with your true purpose, and unlock your God-given potential. You have to be able to take a step back and say, clearly what I'm doing ain't working. You know, because Einstein says doing the same thing, expecting a different result is called insanity. So I had to have a real honest talk with myself and just understand, okay, what got me here? How can I get myself out of this? And how do I not repeat this again? And I've always said, even when I was doing marketing for clients, I always ended up in some form coaching them. Like just to get them to understand that it's okay to let go of something that worked before if you are changing and pivoting to something new. And I always used to say, business problems are personal problems in disguise. Because if you don't have very self, a very good, healthy self-concept, you're not going to want to put yourself on there. A good example is the way that I see this is how do people feel about visibility? Do they shy away and like want to get hives when the idea of putting themselves on Facebook Live or, you know, going out, out there and sharing their message? You know, they're not ready to really take that step when they feel like that is something that's out of their comfort zone. So for me, I'm, um, I also come from a, a classically trained ballet training uh, background and I'm also a, an adult figure skater. So I also like to use sports psychology. Like how do we overcome those moments of when you're challenging your brain to do something new, which is what we call pushing against the comfort zones? Because here's the thing, your brain is always seeking comfort. It's always screaming at you like a two-year-old toddler having a hissy fit when you push against those barriers and say, no, it's time for something new. Because initially, the, those things would have served us back in the day when we were running away from lions to keep ourselves safe. But we're no longer doing that. We're pretty safe in the 21st century. But that primitive way of brain wiring is just built in us. It's the survival mechanism. It's you know, fight, flight, or freeze. We've all heard of that before. And what I had realized is, you know, through working with clients that a lot of them are making decisions like the hustle and grind is about fear and lack. So how do we get into a place of moving ourselves to feel calm, cool, you know, making decisions out of forethought as opposed to, oh, so-and-so just did, did a webinar, I better do a webinar. Oh, so-and-so is now, look at the awesome website, I better go get new photos. Like always feeling like you're chasing this never-ending pinata that's flying around that you can't see, right? So for me, I part of what I do with my clients is no matter what their problem is in their business, whether it's they're trying to scale and they're finding it hard to get team members or they don't want to let go of things because it's what their identity was, we work through a lot of paces in order for them to sort of push past those comfort zones, which is why I call myself a mindset metacog trainer. Because my concepts are, this isn't just a quick fix. I'm not giving you a tool or a hack or a strategy that's do this and you'll make six figures overnight. No. What we're doing is we're training you to get out of the habitual habits and patterns that have got you where you, you are. So how do we undo that? How do we go back and start to rebuild your self-concept and who you are and how you want to show up in the world? And oftentimes, it's, especially for women, I find we, we are very hard on ourselves. We're very self-critical. And oftentimes we hold back making decisions. Like I had one client that, you know, she was, she wanted to do a website, but she'd come up with every excuse under the sun for us to press publish and go, oh, well, I think we need to check this. And oh, I think we need, and I'd say to her, I think you're avoiding the, the big issue here. What is the big issue? And we start to dig in and realize she's actually scared to put herself out there. So, you know, you can't make sound business decisions from lack, self-sabotage. I should be press po uh, publish on my website or publish my book, but oh, I'm going to start nitpicking things and start finding holes or finding excuses because excuses is just a delay tactic for actually getting down to business about what is actually under the hood. That is the problem because the problem is never the problem. There's always some, there's a root issue and what we're dealing with is the symptom. So we want to kind of dig in and that's what I'm good at is really pushing people. And that's what's not, I'm not everybody's cup of tea because some people might find like, well, I don't want to answer that. Like, why do I need to share that? Then there's a lack of awareness. So which brings me number two is not having awareness of the problem is part of the problem. It's like, you know, you go Alcoholics Anonymous. Part of their strategy is they want you to admit that you're an alcoholic because unless you come to that realization and say, I have a problem, we cannot move forward. Like I've had several clients that I've had to say goodbye to, which I just can't work with. I'm like, they're constantly resisting your suggestions and it's almost like a, a mini power struggle. Like they come to you for advice, but then they don't want to show weakness. And so then they're trying to 
pull the power back into their courts and then they want to feel like they're telling you what to do. And I'm like, listen, I'm not in here to battle you. I'm, I'm here to be a mirror and to support you. Let's figure out what the real problem is. So not everybody is ready to do the important work. People want to be in denial. That's cool. Until something happens, and it's usually when the wheels fall off the bus, or something, some change happens, or something, they lose money, relationships go sour, business, something has to, it's almost like you have to have a tipping point for them to realize, I cannot do this anymore. Yes, in my case, peel myself off the floor because I clearly wasn't seeing the signs. And I always have an analogy of this, you know, life is like driving in a car, and we all have different vehicles, and we all have different things, but what high achievers tend to do is to keep their foot on the gas, but we don't necessarily see the signs because we're going at such a fast pace that we don't see the the slowdown signs, we don't see the detours, we're kind of like, no, we've got to keep going and going, especially those with that hard hustle mentality. And then eventually what happens is you crash because you know if you go over the speed limit for too long, you're either going to crash or you're going to run out of gas. Doesn't matter how hard you push that, that car, if it ain't gas, it ain't going anywhere. Even a Ferrari can't go anywhere on no gas. So the whole point, and, and I have a saying that I, I love to teach my, te- my clients is, we need to go slow to go fast. Like if your car needs servicing, we need to take it to the shop, into the garage, get under the hood, start to tinker and see what needs to be fixed. And then we can retire it, put new, you know, Pirelli's on and get it back on the road because you're never going to go where you want to go on a patched work like, if you imagine those old cars where they're always bits and pieces from things, it's like they're just barely making it down the road. And, you know, it's hard because not every, yeah, no, not everybody wants to take the time to pause and get, get the help they need to really fix things are. But what I've known and I've, I've found with my clients is once they get back on the road and they, they realize that this is a shift in mindset, self-concept, lifestyle habits, they're on a different path. And then what happens is it speeds up because just like momentum, like things snowball, it feels slow and it's frustrating to go slow, but it's necessary to slow down in order to speed up. So, and I'd say the third thing, so, um, you know, awareness is a big one, self-sabotage or avoiding and denial and perfectionism. Like being hard on yourself. I'm like, girl, give yourself a break. Did you see how how well you did? And women essentially are are very bad at this. We'll have a list, okay? Everyone can know they have their list. And they'll have like 10 things. And then if she doesn't get all 10 done, maybe she got one done, she will beat herself up to a pulp and just feel terrible about herself, about all the things she didn't do. And she totally discounts the things she did do. So the whole concept is small wins. You did one thing today. Yay! And in my group program, everyone knows it's hilarious. We have a real hoot. We celebrate even the tiniest things. So even if she never takes care of herself, even if she goes to get her hair done, that is a reason for a party. Because the way the brain works, it, we need closure. We need to be able to have a sense of accomplishment. And we need to have that sense of resolution. I mean, why do you think we have funerals and weddings and graduations? It's a, it's a mental shift to make for the people like that old season is done. Now I'm moving into something else. And this is how you know, like this is an example. So I'm sure many of us who love to watch TV can get um, in these series. And if you ever notice, it's called, in writing we call it the open close concept. And you, and you wonder why people binge on shows. So back in the day when I was a kid, you would have to wait for next week to watch the new program, right? Now you can sit and binge in a few hours and get it all done. But really what's happening in your brain is that if you see the beginning of the show, they open up like some kind of conflict or this, the, the characters have to do something or there's some unanswered question. You're like, what is that? And you're curious. You want to know, right? And throughout the, that episode, they'll start to tease things. And then maybe towards the, like three quarters of the way, they will come to some kind of resolution. But they don't completely close the loop. They start another loop. So they might resolve the first one, but then they've enticed you for the next one and they leave you on a cliffhanger. And that's intentional because your brain is seeking closure. Your brain is seeking the old way of, and, and now they lived happily ever after the end. Nothing happens like that anymore. <laughs> We're in a society. They're keeping you plugged in. Your brain is saying, I need it. I need it. Like, tell me, what is that? So I, I think that is a big problem in our modern society. That is, we don't give ourselves closure. 
we don't celebrate ourselves when we do achieve things. And then what happens is you never switch off. If you always feel like you're always running, 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 because literally the Facebooks of the world, the Instagrams are designed to keep us hooked on their, their platform. They want us. It's designed intentionally to hijack your brain, to hijack your behavior. Because how many, how many of us have sat there scrolling and then an hour later, like, oh my gosh, where'd the last hour go? It's literally hijacked your brain. So this is the thing is if you can become aware of that, you can be in charge of it. Like I understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur where you want to pull your hair out in the clients. It's like project creep and they ask for this and then the next thing this is going on and then I don't like it. I don't want it. I've learned the skills of getting under the hood of what is it that frustrates you. Don't give me lip service. I want to know. Let's figure out what that root cause is because think about it this way. When you see somebody who's reacting and they have an emotional breakdown or they are very difficult, like bossy women who are really wanting to be in charge and like a fast pace. And, but unfortunately, most people make their snap judgments on behavior. And behavior, if you think about it, like if you look at a tree, a behavior is like a fruit, is like a symptom. It's like what you see on the outside. But as we go further down the tree and we start to go down the branches, okay, the behavior is, uh, is really... A, a response to circumstances and how you're feeling. But as we go further down the tree and we go down the trunk and we realize our feelings are, well, they are initiated by thoughts. And your thoughts is really what starts to dig down deep into the sand. But then in the thought process, you look down and you look at the roots and you go, why do I think like that? And oftentimes it's got to do with a lot of things that happened in childhood, maybe trauma, rejection, fear, anxiety, hustle like it's classic symptom I, you know I love this um, behavioral analysis especially when you have these interviews with celebs and you know high-powered businessmen and I can always spot the ones who either grew up poor or were rejected by parents because they have an innate built-in desire to prove themselves they will hustle hard until they literally fall off they will you know sabotage themselves and their relationships because they are so fixated on the goal like especially someone who's was raised in um in poverty, they are very motivated to prove themselves. And money is a, is a form of, of, of measurement. Because once you know, you got more bank, you got more zeros on the end of your bank balance, a lot of people have, unfortunately have confused their identity with what they earn. And eventually what happens is something's got to give. Because if we are not in tune with who we really are, we become something we're not. We, we walk around with masks. And then anybody knows, trying to keep, be something you're not, is exhausting. And that's what the behaviors then is the frustration of perhaps that she is, seems very micromanaging and she seems very difficult, but maybe she was raised by really strict parents who didn't, didn't allow her off the hook that perfection in it was perfection or bust. So her brain is constantly telling her, you, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. It's not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And unless we reprogram that, thing, that thinking, behavior is going to repeat itself. But she has to be ready and, be, and want to change in order to make the change. But from somebody else looking in, if you're dealing with a difficult client, understanding personality is also very good. Like I love these personality tests. I'm actually a certified DISC a behavioral personality analysis, which shows you how someone is actually behaving versus who they really are. And that oftentimes will show you where there's a disconnect. But when you can understand somebody else's perspective, it gives you a lot more empathy and understanding that it's not necessarily them trying to be difficult. It's just basically their brain hijacking their thoughts because it's how they were trained or how they were raised or it's it's like computer programming. If you've got, if you've got bad programming, the computer's going to crash. So it helps you understand like what is the real reason she's being difficult? So you could ask your clients things like, you know, I know you, you, you're feeling a little nervous. Can you tell me what actually is bothering you? What is it about going, going live that really worries you? Is it because you, you don't want things perfect? Or help me understand your thinking. And oftentimes people are like, oh, I didn't think about it, what I'm thinking. Really what they're doing, they're trying to find their identity. And that's why I always believe your purpose and your identity and your self-concept are all interrelated. That how can you show up as something that you're not? So we can paint a great picture, we can have all the pretty graphics and we can have all the fabulous, um, you know, branded photos. But unless they are being true to themselves, it's very, very exhausting to keep up appearances of something you're not. So probably what happens is 
we try on like we try on an outfit like I found this myself like it took a few tries for me to find the fit and the feel of who I want to be and who I want to serve and it, it it was a bit messy like starting out I look back at my website when I started and I was like oh girl oh I can't believe you put that out there but I had to do that in order to get to where I'm at and most people especially the recovering perfectionists out there don't want to do it unless it's perfect but here's the thing Perfection doesn't come without practice, without getting a bit messy, without actually trying and tinkering and, well, maybe it's this and maybe it's that. And it's okay to kind of change, but re- before you make a change, we want to understand, is it a matter of, oh, oh my gosh, I'm getting close to actually hitting go and now everyone's going to know everything about me and now I, now I'm people are expecting things from me, or is that, I don't think this is truly me, like, I had a photo shoot once and they looked gorgeous, but I was like, oh, that's just, oh. I just don't come across the way I, I think that I want people to, to know me by. So it's just a lot of psychology in, in, in a lot of this process. What's the worst thing you could happen? You make a wrong decision, so what? Back to the drawing board. Is it really that bad? And I call this cut, talk bringing yourself to the edge. A lot of us fear things and the fear of something happen, happening is worse than it actually happening. So what if you went and put a website up and it wasn't, it didn't convert or it didn't do as well or so what then you tweak it and you try it but you won't know unless you have the elements it's like trying to build build, bake a cake and you you, you're trying to experiment with what flavors you like you won't know until you start tasting a few things Um, and it's like you you only develop that as you go along only the process can teach you that and and I think you know coming from my marketing background I know that mass marketing has done a bad number on people and niche drama like Who's my client? I need to know exactly who I'm serving. I'm like, I've had, I struggled with this too, even starting my coaching business. It's like, well, maybe it should be this and maybe it should be that. And then somebody would come along and I look back and I go, that was actually an opportunity for me to learn. But I said no, because they didn't fit the perfect. It's like women in dating. They have their dating profile. And unless he's blue eyed, blonde hair, six foot two, I'm not even looking at you, honey. You don't even fit the mold. And what I'd realize is, there's actually a lot of conversation and growth to be had in maybe maybe somebody doesn't appear at first to be the ideal client, but what is it that I'm learning about myself in the process? And what am I? What do I have to say about this that I feel I can contribute? Nobody gets out there perfect the first time. They just don't. That's just that's not life. Life is a messy. It is a t- trial and testing, and even from a marketing perspective. You know, the ones that come from a marketing and analytical background will know that you have to test things. It's A-B testing. Let's try this. If that doesn't work, let's tweak and tweak in here. But I think we've become, become a society of per- perfect pictures and, you know, everything's got to be perfect out the door. But maybe we need to think, well, so what? We got it wrong. We can try it again. We get so involved in our lives and in our clients' lives that we all want to make it about ourselves and how it makes us feel or how they behave. I like to look at it, take ourselves out like, if I'm watching a movie at the movie theater, I'm not in the movie. I'm, a, I'm in the audience. And it helps you separate your, your feelings and your thoughts. And you realize it's, it's not about you. Their behavior is about them. And how we react to their behavior is our decision. And we, once you can come back, from, come back from that place of, okay, she's having a little bit of a hissy fit. So something is clearly going on. That maybe instead of me pressing, I could ask her, you know, what is, you know, t- share with me how you're feeling or what thoughts come up. Like, how, is there anything that you want me to know? Like, how can I help support you? Like, coming a, a, from a side of, I'm, I'm observing this as a movie, you know, because, you know, as, as when you are in the, the audience, you see things that people in there don't know. Like, you know, those mysteries where they're like, oh, he's behind you. So you, it just helps you create that perspective, right? And pu- pull yourself away and then, so your emotions don't get in the way because the worst thing is if she's crazy and you come crazy, it's all lost of crazy. <laughs> Every social media platform is a tool. Every like YouTube, Instagram, you, they're all tools. And this is what I always want to say to people. Don't get hung up on the tools. What is more important is to test the messaging. So I use the same tools I did five and 10 years ago, but over the, over the years, as I've, uh, I've pivoted and I've changed, I kind of test things by trying out things. I'll put out a post or I'll do a, a Facebook Live or I'll do a, 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 a podcast. And I actually did a whole series in my podcast. I did like about 50 interviews with people in a market that I thought that I wanted to serve. But in the process of doing that and asking questions and learning about them, I realized they were not an ideal fit. 
but I wouldn't have known that unless I had tried. So what I'd say is, you know, even if I look back at my, it's just to start doing the new thing. The, you know, if you need to throw yourself a party and go, ta-da, I've arrived, and you want to do a launch, great, do that. But really, it doesn't matter if you had things wrong. What I, I've realized is you just start to dilute the old message with the new. You just start to focus your attention on the new stuff, and you start to mention, and the people will eventually like, oh, what is she talking about? That's different. What is that? I, don't, I haven't heard her say that. You might have to do it, you know, 10, 20, 100 times. Because it's a it's a matter of like priming and retraining your audience, if especially if you're doing a rebrand, or if you're new, is to just start sharing about it. And it's never going to be an overnight thing. It's about consistent, uh, reliable, and regular effort. It doesn't have to be these huge, grandiose uh, things. You don't have to spend a, a bunch of money. You can do things cheaply. Like um, I've written eight books. I'm busy writing number nine. And I'd realize early on, that before I go and publish the book, best I test that the content is actually resonating with people. So I'll kind of say, I have this idea, send me your questions. And again, messy. Like I'll have post-its. Well, that was a good one. And that was a good one. And kind of like build it on the way. But you're never really going to know unless you actually just step out and try. So I just say, bite the bullet, put yourself out there, get over yourself because you are going to make a mess. You're probably going to look back one day and like I look at my old YouTube videos and I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I wearing? Like who let me out the front door like that? <laughs> you know, and it's just be kind to yourself. You're learning, you're growing. This is just life, right? It's just take the pressure off. There's no, there's no perfection. Are you ready to change your brain to change your life? Discover how to break limiting beliefs, stop self-sabotage, and unlock your full potential by rewiring your brain using neuroscience, coaching, and faith-based principles. Come and join my coaching program, Unstick Your Mind, today.